So today we'll continue lecture 13 and we are, will describe the direct piezoelectric effect. And the direct piezoelectric effect uh, is an implementation. We implement it when we apply a force to a piezoelectric and due to the direct piezoelectric effect we get a voltage. Um, and this is sort of circumvented through charge. So we actually apply a charge and then there's a capacitance C and then that's actually the way that the voltage occurs. <clears throat> so I will just go ahead and derive this from the basic equation for uh, for, pie uh, for a piezo. So we will start with two equations. One which is like a piezoelectric one equation, which we have the polarization, or rather we can understand the change in polarization or the apparent polarization of the material, because we know piezoelectric materials have an internal dipole, uh, and that is a called the spontaneous polarization. However, in this case, what we're practical, practically going to measure and going to produce and and, and witness is the charge. Uh, you could call it electric displacement, but that's not really true. Um, here, it's polarization and times the stress. And this is derived from the um, constitutive, constitutive equation. It's a very common equation. We have another equation, Q equals CV. And that's, that will also be important in understanding how a applied stress or force, we'll use the word force, uh, then relates to a charge that we develop or and finally a voltage. So polarization is essentially charge per area that ends up being the units it's really charge per meter per volume but in this case we'll have Q charge per area equals the piezoelectric D coefficient and stress is force per area right and what do you know, jet cancels, so the charge we get is the D coefficient times the force. Okay, so this means sort of theoretically, if we have a material, and we appeal electric material, which has some polarization, and we apply a point force here, despite the area at which we apply that force, we will still get the same voltage even if you change the area of which you apply the force, but assuming the total force is the same, but just the stress changes based on based on that uh, distribution. So we have this charge equals the piezoelectric D coefficient times the force. But what we'd really like and what we typically will go ahead and measure would be the voltage. So how do you get voltage in this situation? Okay, charge equals CV, which is this. So let's uh, let's reduce this. And there you have it. Uh, the voltage equals the piezoelectric D coefficient times the force divided by the capacitance. Well, let's write that like that. And the capacitance here is determined by uh, the permittivity of the material under free stress. So the permittivity of the material or the capacitance is determined by uh, the relative permittivity times the per vacuum permittivity multiplied by the thickness divided by the area. Okay then what we'll have here is substituting all these equations back the voltage the final voltage is equal to the piezoelectric d coefficient times the force times the area divided by the permittivity and the thickness so what this equation essentially tells us is as we increase the force obviously we're going to get more voltage but as the area of the piezoelectric material increases compared to uh, the inner 
let's say we're just using it for comparison so we have one one material like this and one like this they're both the same thickness as we increase the area we're actually going to get less voltage because that voltage is that that charge because it will produce the same amount of charge as we see from this equation because we apply the same force but if you apply the same force on these two materials these two samples despite them having the same thickness and the same material properties we will get more voltage here and we will get less voltage here and I'm just in the next now we're going to go to our console simulation uh, just simply to verify this equation that voltage equals D F A divided by ER EO and the thickness so we'll go to a model wizard we'll choose a 3d simulation we will choose piezoelectric devices this is going to be following the very same pattern as the last video lecture 13 a so I'm actually going to just breeze through this quicker or more quickly than I did previously. So, okay, change this to millimeters. Now we will build our geometry. First, I'm going to establish a work plane but no you know what i'm not going to do a work plane i'm just going to have a cylinder and it will be a radius 10 and a height of 10. that's going to be a piezoelectric material and what we will do, we will have to assign it a PZT material. So we go ahead, add material from library, PZT. As I mentioned before, the sort of the standard PZT is PZT4. Um, so that's that. We need to fix it from the bottom. Now the constraint is not going to be as big of a concern as it was in the previous simulation. For reasons I won't go, get into just now but for, feel free to email me and ask if you have a question about it um, fix constraint and that will be fixed on the bottom therefore console will be happy uh, just because you need to equal an opposite force essentially um, so electrostatics we are zero charge initial condition Well, let's see what it does. I don't think I've ever done this type of a simulation before. Uh, we would need to apply, apply stress or apply force, volume force, um, boundary load. And because force is just easier, and we're just going to put a negative. 10 newtons on it we will okay that's good so we'll do this actually uh, if because we're doing a electrostatics we'll need to put a ground because you're technically going to measure it so you do it in a similar way of how you actually measure it in practice and then you would create a floating potential at the top therefore it simulates them those two electrodes and because you assign a ground you'll be able to measure the difference between the ground and the electrode okay and I think I hope I probably put a I don't think I put a simulation here 
So I need to add study because I didn't do that. And it's just going to be a stationary study. Okay, and uh, I believe we should be done. Just solve that, or I think I should have meshed it, but it probably just did the mesh for me, which that looks fine. Um, let's look at the results. Electric potential. Okay, that looks good. Um. Well, actually, this is just easier sometimes just to, uh, let's see where the electrostatics is, and we use on the ground, on the bottom, floating potential on the top, so just to sort of get that point probe for the floating potential probes. Um, just right there. And we are going to measure now. Electrostatics, flowing potentials, that. Okay. So we can now just compute it. It's fairly simple. Um, this is the displacement we see, and ideally this would be simply supported, uh, but I don't think Compal is not going to like me simply supporting anything. Um, so we got a voltage of negative 7.58, so we can keep that in mind. Negative 7.58 And the D coefficient and the force and the area and the primitivity and the thickness. Thickness is 10 millimeters. Uh, the area is uh, 10 millimeters times pi the force is 10 newtons I believe it was 10 newtons we specified that's right um, what we can do here is go to material properties and remember it's in the wrong form well not the wrong form it's just not in the form we're used to so we can change that into a form we're used to looking at or this is better for basic understanding okay because the material properties are easily understood so relative primitivity we're going to be looking at this 1300 for the relative primitivity And the PSO D coefficient, I believe it's 300 something. Those are D3, D31. Uh, pico coulombs per newton. See, look at this. Look at these units. Pico coulombs per newton. For how many newtons you get, you get that many coulombs. Well, I'm not gonna do all these all these equations here. Um, that's fun, but I'm not gonna calculate capacitance. Uh, let's just see if you got the right amount of charge. Boundary probe. Let's look at the top. Well, eh. Actually, what is this? Why is it selecting everything that I don't want? 
Wonderful. I'm just going to actually measure the charge just to make it easier on myself. So let's go in here. Let's let me just come back down and find the expression for a charge. Charge surface density. Um that could work. Charge surface density. And what you could just do is instead of average it, you can just integrate it. Um and that would give you the amount of charge, right? So right now, basically what I just did, I could have solved this. I could have plugged all of the information on this side and then compared it to the voltage that I should have got. But in this case, I'm just going to draw this equation here and I'm just going to calculate the charge and see the force so it should be 289 pico coulombs per newton and I applied 10 newtons so I'm going to get 2890 coulombs of charge um, that's what I should get, and hopefully if the boundary condition doesn't mess up things too much, because I had it constrained, fully constrained, not simply supported. Okay, that is what I understood from there. So yes, I figured out that by creating a 1D plot group and then creating a point graph and then assigning, then choosing a random point and then assigning the correct expression for the boundary uh, probe. There is a about 1.46 coulombs, which is not uh, the Q or the charge, which I uh, was hoping for by via the equations, which was the force times the PSUG coefficient. But uh, it is on the same uh, level. Uh, if we move that over one, it'd be one fourteen. Okay. Um, so that didn't work for some reason. I didn't get the right charge. I think it may have been because I uh, maybe uses floating potential and that has initial values but anyways uh, what I did instead because I couldn't get the charge to make sense right now I went back to this equation and I will make a confession that I made this equation incorrect this should be thickness on bottom because the thinner you make it the higher the capacitance this should be area on top And if you go here, uh, that would then change this as well. So this should be area, and this should be thickness. And with that, always, I uh, made this equation. I set these are all the parameters here, and I simulated or I, or d times the force times the thickness divided by the permittivity times the area and that gave me 8 volts and what I, if you saw what I calculated um, what we saw from the what, what, we, what we got from the program was negative 7.858 and that difference is due to that constraint um, because we completely constrain this and when you constrain it um, the material cannot get larger at the bottom. However, what would be better would be if you simply constrained it, but I think console didn't let me do it last time, so it's not going to let me do it now.
But anyways, this is pretty close. I'm not going to rerun the simulation just in order to get that final agreement. 